This is Twit. So Microsoft had a keynote at Computex early this morning. It was not live streamed or blogged or anything, but there they did talk about um, some of the Windows 10 on ARM PCs that are coming. Oh, they call that them we Always heard about Connected, right? Yeah, they're calling them Always Connected. Um, and that brand, Always Connected, refers to both Intel-based and ARM-based PCs that have LTE and now eSIM technology uh, that are going to be coming. What makes so it always connected? Is it just a WAN? Is it just LTE? Or yeah, it's like yeah. you can you can um, buy a buy a data plan using the eSIM technology and manage it through the store um, for Windows 10, right. I believe. What but is so, it, I mean, eSIM? It's just it's just, it's an embedded SIM. Right, built-in SIM, electronic oh. SIM. Remember when the, yeah. well, like the iPad does this, basically. Yeah, and it's a problem on the iPad because when AT&T gets a hold of the SIM, they lock you in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is, uh, this this is a different, it's a standard, and it, it the point of this is you, that can't happen. So you oh, can good. switch okay. carriers yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right, so until, until today, we didn't know which vendors were going to be making the first Windows 10 ARM-based always connected PCs, but now we know. The first group are going to include Asus, HP, and Lenovo, Microsoft said. Um, they also listed the carriers and mobile operators that are going to support this. So there's AT&T, um, British Telecom, Vodafone, Orange, a whole bunch of them. They did have China Mobile as one of the companies listed, but they've taken them off the list without the saying why. <laughs> Thank you for that because I got a complaint from someone at Microsoft's PR firm who said, "Could you please?" I don't. They said, "I don't know where you got China Mobile from, but if you could remove that from your little list." And I was like, "Guys, do you think I added China Mobile to the list?" And I obviously got <laughs> I just it made you. that up. <laughs> no, it was really. It was kind of weird the way it was phrased. Yeah. But anyway. Um, yeah. No yes, Verizon. China Mobile was on there. Yep. No Verizon. Um, hmm. Not too surprisingly. Yeah, I they guess, don't get along so well, do they, Microsoft? Not so well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, we what's interesting is I'm, I'm curious when these are coming, because when Qualcomm had its last earnings call, they said by Q4 of this year, there'd be Windows 10 on ARM devices in market. But then yep. uh, today, when I asked for an update, they said soon. And I said, <laughs> so does that mean Q4? Does it mean sooner? And they yeah. said, we have nothing more to say. And in their um, blog post about this, they Very say... Sean Spicer of them. <laughs> I know. But I answered your question. Post, Asked and answered. In the blog post, I, when I it don't... talks about the operators, it says coming within a year. Yeah, I, I, I don't actually think um, the story on this has changed. I think we're going to see okay. one or two devices this yeah. year, very late. But mm -hmm. then it's what it's really going to... It's really going to happen throughout 2018. Yeah, that's what I think too. Yeah, so I it, like just this idea. I, I really you like it. Well, yeah. you know, I have mixed feelings, and I noticed a lot of like Google stopped putting. In fact, most of the I don't think any of the Chromebooks have uh, LTE, right. and yeah. I think the theory is well, you already have an LTE device, I, and you yeah, just I, uh, I, oh. hotspot it. Yep. yep, and then you you tether it to charge the phone, so you don't have to worry about that. Right. And yeah. what's the big deal? I, right. I don't. I know. You know uh, do you I, remember, Paul? You probably remember this when when mm -hmm. Microsoft introduced which Surface was it that had LTE? The three Surface the three. L yep. three had yep. LTE built in, and a lot of users were asking for Microsoft to come out with more surfaces with built in LTE. And I remember them saying to me, "We're not going to do that because um, we don't really think that's how people use these devices, and no one really wants it." Um, and now here they are, right? So I, I guess well, they things, decided things change. You know, things change. Um, yeah. Okay, but yeah. I mean, I just think it's how, a Project Fi on one of these devices would be interesting, right? Because oh, yeah. you don't pay for it unless you use it, and mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. I mean, I, I, th I think yeah. the big problem with the SIM stuff in devices like this has always been that you pay for it, basically, right? I'm sure there are right. exceptions to that. I know, I know there are pay as you go type things, but. You know, for a long time, this stuff was very expensive and it was, uh, you know, a minimum or a fee or like just a fee every month. And yeah. unless you know you're going to be using it regularly that way, and I don't yeah. think a lot of people do, it's expensive. I know. Yeah, I've had, I've had people say to me they wanted the built-in LTE because they couldn't get a good cell signal at their home, um, so they couldn't tether their phone to their PC. There were a lot of things like that, but um, yeah. Yeah. 
I, I'm I'm uh, curious I, I, how this will work and what the data plans are going to look it like. It could be the work is paying for it and you want it right. separate from your home phone. For that reason, it's mm -hmm. just easier if there's direct billing. Uh, there, uh, there are always yeah. reasons, but right. I just I still don't see this as a big, big deal. Yeah. It, I'm, you know, they didn't show off any of these ARM-based devices during the keynote as far as I know. So, you know, people are saying we haven't seen benchmarks. We don't really know what these things look like. We just have the list now of vendors and people supporting that. They're just uh, gonna them. Be PCs. I, I this is yeah. not going to be like when you buy a hybrid car and it's really ugly for some reason. I think <laughs> HP or whoever will basically sell one, you know, some number of models that are the yeah. same, just like they do today between AMD and Intel chips. Yeah, probably. You yeah. know. Yeah. I we know right. what the performance hit will be in uh, ARM, or will there no. seven? It will be seven. Seven. That's a good number. <laughs> That's a good number. No, we don't. We no. don't. I mean, I it's. I bet it varies by app. Even I, it's going to yeah. vary by workload. Yeah. It's you know. And then there's going to be emulation, right? Um, to run non-store apps on this, and and Microsoft has yeah. said that that there won't be a performance hit, but we haven't been able to see that so far in I, in real life. I don't know a lot about this, but for example, I know that on uh, with the Samsung Chromebooks, there's a there's a plus and a pro, and one is Intel and one is ARM, and they both have a performance problem in one area. The ARM version runs Android apps really well, but it's kind of slow mm -hmm. running native Chrome stuff. On the Intel version, it's the exact opposite. The Chrome stuff works great, but then the yeah. ARM apps or the uh, yeah. mobile apps, the Android apps, don't work well. Oh, that's interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. That makes um, sense. I, it has to kind of be like that a little bit, right? I mean. I'm, you know, like the the trick is that the basic experience works, and that the stuff you need, whatever it might be, maybe you need, uh, well, Microsoft Office is a bad example. Maybe you need Photoshop or something. And for some reason, if that works well enough for you, mm -hmm. you know, it, then it could be okay. Yeah. 